This video is all about using the Instant NGP software to take in a video that you've made and turn it into a Nerf and then let you create a little animation flying around through it. So I'm going to assume you know how to uh, download this software. There's now a Windows binary release. You've got it all set up. You've got Anaconda running and you've you know, properly seen the, uh, the little fox Nerf on the screen. So you, you've basically gotten it going. This is more about making the movie and whatnot. So let's say I have a movie. Here's a little movie. It's not much of a movie. It's just really meant to capture this model, which is a sort of a practice model by this uh, famous sculptor, Daniel Chester French, who did like the, the sculpture of Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial and so on. And uh, this is of just a guy, Charles Devins, who's a Civil War Union general and later became Attorney General. Anyway, so that's the movie, and I've sort of captured it as best I could. And what I first want to do is basically uh, take frames from it. So let's see, I have to go to where the Instant NGP software is. So that's that. And uh, all of these commands will be in the in the notes below below this video and so now I'm going to start this process running which is uh, to extract the images so if you look at this movie you basically are now going to get a bunch of images that get created from the movie and you can go look this up it's basically doing like two frames per second so it's going to pull out a bunch of frames from this little movie um, the cool thing here is this thing's just been added called overwrite which basically says hey don't pause, don't ask the user, you know, are you sure you want to overwrite this data and so on. So this is really handy for batch processing. But anyway, this is going to churn for a minute or two and I'll be back uh, when it's done. It's done churning and now we have a bunch of images. So what I like to do is go through these images and delete the blurry ones. And in fact, the uh, there's a whole web page that you can read carefully, which is all these sort of data set tips and so on. And it recommends the same, is because it's sort of garbage in, garbage out. If the images are blurry, they're not going to do you much good at all. So, like, so there's a blurry one. I delete it. Uh, that one's kind of blurry too. Let's just get rid of it. And what I'm doing is just using Irfan View to kind of walk through all the images. And as I see a blurry one, I uh, just make it go away. So yeah, that one's kind of blurry. Let's delete it. You just hit the delete key. You can also hit the X up here, but delete key is just just plain easier. So anyway, let's let's crunch through this, get this process over with. I'm just deleting a bunch. And this also tells you that you should probably try to avoid uh, <laughs> moving the camera around so quickly uh, so you don't get such blurry images. You could also just take a bunch of still images if you want, but that can take a while. So making a little video is often faster. So I'm almost done. And sure, that looks good. That means I'm at the end. And now I'm ready to go on to the next process, which is uh, camera matching. So what that is, is I'll just, again, toss these two commands in. And now what it's going to do is just exhaustively uh, match cameras and uh, come up with some more data about that kind of stuff. And what's nice is actually if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or newer, um, there's a different system called Record 3D, which you can use to have the, the sort of recorded camera positions uh, come into the system. So that, that can be a little bit cleaner. But I've got an iPhone 11 and uh, nothing fancy, and so I'm just doing it this way. So we'll let that crunch for a minute, and we'll be back after that. We're back, and now we have some extra data files and whatnot. And now we're ready to do the next thing, and the most fun thing, really is to run Instant NGP itself. And Instant NGP now has this whole ability to uh, make the animations inside Instant NGP. So it's, it's uh, definitely a more pleasant process. So let's just resize a little bit. And uh, you can see it's resolving here. It's just pulling in my images and doing its best to, to make the statue. And Basically, you just look at this loss graph, and when this loss graph is just all up and down, sort of teeth pattern, and it's not dropping it at all, then you're kind of done, and you can stop training or whatever. But right now, it's training along, and that's fine. We can still interact with the uh, with the software and do some other setup. So one thing I like to do is 
you know, you can see it's kind of noisy around the edges. There's a lot of stuff, and I really just want to focus on the statue. So what I'm going to do is trim it down. What I do is I just take crop size and trim, trim, trim. And one other thing, one other cool tip is that I can hit the tab key, and that'll toggle the menus on and off. And uh, so anyway, you can sort of see what you're doing there. Um, so let's see, oops, not that one, that one. So anyway, I sort of trim, and OK, that's about as tight as I can get it. But I can do better than that, it turns out. Uh, if I use this crop AABB, which stands for uh, axis aligned bounding volume, what I can do is also, let's, uh, let's rotate it a bit. So now I'm kind of rotating it so that it's kind of squared off. And I'll also try to rotate it this direction so that the base is kind of level. And so that, that looks pretty good. Um, anyway, so what I can do is do this, and now I could pull it in even a little bit closer. So let's see, I think it's this max. Yeah, so I'm going to pick, pull the back wall in. I can go, you know, look at the tail, make sure I didn't cut the horse's tail off. And, you know, that's pretty reasonable. I could probably get a little fancier with, like, min Y and, you know, cut off the, cut off the base a little bit maybe min Z, you know, et cetera. But anyway, these, these are just a way to sort of uh, focus in on your model and, and make it nice and, you know, what your focus is. And when you're done with that, what you can do is then close down this control, like make these controls go away by just doing the crop there. And so now I'm all set pretty much. And, uh, and by the way, if you want, what you can do anytime you make a nerf like this is to do a save at any point to save your results. And then when you, if you were to reopen Instant NGP, you can just do load on that model and it'll get you all that training data back so you don't have to wait again for a few minutes. Um, so on to making a camera. So let's just, in fact, this is a fine place to start. We'll just, uh, we'll go, yeah, let's, let's do something like this. Okay, so we'll start there, add from camera. So now we've made a camera and that's, that's our first, sort of first keyframe. And I'm just using the mouse, like the mouse middle button lets me pan around like this. Uh, the mouse scroll wheel lets me zoom. So, okay, so maybe I move over to here and I say, yeah, that's a pretty good frame. I add from camera and, you know, move around again. And let's say, let's say I take one from here, something like that. You know, nothing too exciting, but hey, it's you know I'm just what I'm going to do here is make just a little cool animation, and let's get a sort of dramatic final shot here, something like that, and uh, add from cam, and then now if you back up, you'll see I have these cameras, and you can see the path, the dashed line is the path, and one other cool feature, um, well oh by the way you can also do this kind of thing save on your path, um, but one other cool feature that I like is that you can also make a looping animation, so you can just have some continuous loop, uh, something you can play. So anyway, we're all set now. We've uh, we've set up our path. All we have to do is render. So what we're going to do is, let's call this uh, Devons for the name of the guy, and I like a 15 second. Five is too short, um, and 30 frames per second is probably plenty fine. So this all looks good. So now I can just hit render. And what's going to happen is, as you can see, it's going to render. And it approximates about how long time that render will take. Um, in this case, it's probably a low estimate just because we're going in close to the model and that when you get closer, it's just going to take longer. Like you can see, the remaining time is, if anything, it's going up, <laughs> but only for ever so slightly. But anyway, in about two or three minutes, it'll be done. And I'll be back with you at that point. Here's the last few seconds of the process. You can take, see it took about four minutes total. And now it's just taking all those frames and making a final video out of it. And we should have a video. It's uh, fresh out of the oven. Let's go here. And it won't be in the Chesterwood directory or wherever you know your data normally is. It's actually up above where instant NGP is. And here's what the video looks like. So, you know, nothing uh, Academy Award winning or anything, but, you know, made a nice little looping video and in not a very long time. So that's about it, and I hope you have a great time using this software. It's, it's really pretty fun.